Welcome, folks, once again to Valley View Baptist Church in North Ogden, Utah. I'm Pastor Dave, extending warm uh, season greetings to you. And, you know, this next uh, Friday is uh, uh, Christmas, and it's all about Christ. And so we want to continue our series on on uh, Christmas. And, and as always, folks, I like to start my message that we're speaking about our exceeding abundantly able God from Ephesians 3, 21, 20, and 21. So we're also speaking, and we must remember that faith defeats fear, faith defeats stress, faith defeats anxiety, faith defeats discouragement. And so all these things, we have a God that we need to to have communion with. He's still in the miracle business. He's still on his throne, all-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present at the same time. So let us, let us look to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we continue our series on, on Christmas and the real meaning and the heart of it, I just ask your blessing on our uh, discussion today, our message, Lord, and I just pray Father, that our hearts would be open uh, to our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, who is the real reason for the season? And yes, Father, we're, we're in uh, chaos, it seems, and around the world with this uh, pandemic. And, uh, and I just pray, Lord, that the, that the vaccine that's being uh, developed uh, would uh, meet the needs to, to just uh, over time clear up uh, this pandemic. And I pray, Father, for the, the killing of the virus. It's killing so many. My heart goes out and I offer my prayer to those first responders. Lord, those medical people, nurses and doctors that are right in the trenches, uh, putting their life on the line to save lives. I pray for them. I pray for our police department, our military, Lord, our National Guard, or all those that are uh, first-line defenders of this great country. And so, Heavenly Father, I, I pray your blessing on, on those folks. And so, now as we come together to share uh, some time uh, with you and, and uh, with those who will be listening, watching, uh, just ask uh, your blessing on each one and prepare our hearts for your word. Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, uh, the, I like to kind of start my messages out a little bit with a, with a few uh, things. And uh, so uh, I found this uh, in an old uh, Sword of the Lord uh, magazine, and it's uh, Christmas Without Christ. The thoughtless masses who today celebrate Christmas but leave Christ out little realize what they proclaim by such neglect. For what, after all, is Christmas without Christ? Dale Crowley said, It is the virgin mother without a supernatural babe. It is the swaddling clothes without the infant redeemer. It is the manger cradle without the divine occupant. It is the angel choir without a song. It is the lonely shepherd without a message from the skies. It is the fruitless quest of the wise men on a hopeless mission. It is the star of Bethlehem without promise or signification. It is a perishing word, world without a savior. It is a Bible without a message of hope. It is a God of infinite power without love for dying sinners. It is the history and eternity without Jesus. Wow, what a, what a thought. I don't know who wrote that, but it is, is powerful. 
And this one, it says, God understands. God knows about and understands the heartaches and heartbreaks of his children. I know their, their sorrows, it says in Exodus 3, 7. God understands your sorrow. He sees the fall, falling tear and whispers, I am with thee, then falter not nor fear. God understands your heartache. He knows the bitter pain. Oh, trust him in the darkness. You cannot trust in vain. That was written and shared with us by Oswald J. Smith. Well, this is entitled The Set of the Sail by Rebecca R. Williams. One ship sails east and one sails west by the selfsame wind that blows. It's it's the set of the sail and not the gale that determines the way it goes. Like the winds of the sea are the ways of fate as we journey along through life. It's the set of the soul that determines the goal and not the stress or the strife. That's an awesome thought for us. And this one by D.L. Moody, one of my favorite uh, pastors and uh, commentators. Christ was foretold. Christ was foretold to the serpent as a man in Genesis 3.15. He was foretold to Abraham as to his nation in Genesis 22.18. He was foretold to Jacob as to his tribe in Genesis 49.10. He was foretold to Isaiah as to his family in Isaiah 11, 1 through 5. He was foretold to Micah as to his town in Micah 5, 2. He was foretold to Daniel as to his time in Daniel 9, 25. He was foretold to Mary as to the person in Luke 1, 30 and 32. He was foretold by angels as to his date in um, Luke 2, 11, and he was foretold by a star as to his birthplace in Matthew 2, 9. Isn't that, isn't that a story in itself? Uh, and this one, it's just entitled, Dear Lord, without thy sunshine and thy rain, we could not have the golden grain. Without thy love, we'd not be fed. We thank thee, dear Lord, for our daily, daily bread. And then, folks, I want to share with uh, just entitled uh, Jesus. It's by uh, Charles Inglis. It says, Jesus, the Word of God became flesh. The Son of God became man. The Lord of all became a servant. The righteous one was made sin. The eternal one tasted death. The risen one now lives in twice-born men. The seated one is coming again. And then these titles of Christ in John 1. He's the Word in verse 1. He's the life in verse 4. He's the light in verse 7. He's the only begotten of the Father in verse 14. He's Jesus Christ in verse 17. He's the Lord in verse 23. He's the Lamb in verse 29. He's the Son of God in verse 34. He's the Master in verse 38. He's Jesus of Nazareth in verse 45. He's the Son of Joseph in verse 45. He's the King of Israel in verse 49. He's the Son of Man in verse 51. He was described in John chapter 1 amazingly, is it not, uh, my friends? So uh, I want to share one more, and it's entitled The Magic of Christmas, and then I'll proceed to give, give you uh, a message. It says, and this is by Mary Mason, The magic of Christmas is more than a star and glitter and tinsel and snow. It's more than gay presents stacked under a tree and more than bright lights all aglow. The magic of Christmas began with a babe, divinity housed in man. 
humanity born with the wisdom of God, obedient to a great plan. The magic of Christmas must pause at the tomb and shout, he's risen once more. And blood stains the hillside of old Palestine as wise men bend low to a door. The magic of Christmas is knowing the truth, accepting the babe in the hay, as being the crucified man on the cross who triumphed over death and decay. The magic of Christmas is looking beyond today with this brief disconnect. The knowing of the knowing the Christ of both cradle and cross is coming again as he went. It's singing the carols on Christmas Eve night while searching a star-studded sky and breathing a prayer even so Jesus come and take us to mansions on high. A beautiful poem by Mary, Mary Mason. And so with those little thoughts as we think about the real meaning of Christmas, I would just like to share with you for a few moments uh, today, folks, about our Christmas 2020. We go back to Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, excuse me, verse Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. I'm, I'm starting to read Luke 2, 10 and 11, forgive me. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 10 and 11. And I want us to read Isaiah 9, uh, 6 and, and uh, 7. Uh, it's such a wonderful passage of, of scripture and I, I use it a lot, folks. And so let me just share, share with you. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform uh, this. I spoke on that again last, uh, last week and uh, it's just an awesome uh, narrative uh, at Isaiah 9, what it does for us, and it's just appropriate to share it again as we, as we talk about uh, Christmas. You know, God does everything in due time. No lapse of ages can subdue his power. No past successes of man in bringing wicked devices to pass can limit God's conquest. No geographical boundaries can circumscribe his activities. No power of Satan or man can bring to naught God's promise of salvation through Jesus Christ. No powerful rebellion of angelic hosts can change the time when the claims of deity are to be vindicated, when omnipotence shall sig signalize itself by an outlay of godlike power, and that in independence of human aid, and above all beyond all human knowledge. As I said, we have an exceeding abundantly able, able God that just rings, particularly at this time of, of year. Believing this, let us stand at midnight in Bethlehem of Judea, and listen to these words in Matthew 2, 6. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. Matthew 2, 6. <clears throat> Let us look. 
from the little village of Bethlehem, nestling in its quiet seclusion, like some landlocked harbor away from the storms of the wild oceans, to Jerusalem yonder where thousands are wrapped in slumber. All is still in Bethlehem. All is still in Bethlehem that has nursed its busy population to rest. But hark, my friends, there's heard the wail of an infant from a neighboring cattle barn. A queenly star unseen before does sentinel duty over the spot. Angelic legions are on the wing and the skies resound with a new anthem from heaven. Isaiah, the great prophet who preached, were always uh, with thunder and lightning of Sinai and the foregleaming of, of crimson Calvary declared in Isaiah 7, 14 through 16. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Isaiah 7, 14 through 16. To Joseph, the angel of the Lord appeared when Mary espoused to Joseph before they came together was found with child of the Holy Ghost. And in these words, we find divine declaration. I'll read to you Matthew 1, 19 through 23. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to get her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Matthew 1, 19 through uh, 23. To Mary, a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, the angel Gabriel sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, made divine declaration. And I'm reading to you from Luke chapter 1 verses 18 through 35. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. 
Luke 1, verses 28 to 35. So that's the message to, to Mary. To the shepherds, the angels of the Lord, and angels of heaven made declaration. And it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. To the same startled shepherds, a multitude from the heavenly choir made declaration, singing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men, which is Luke uh, 2.14. Oh, and let's go over to verse 25 and 26. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Ghost was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Oh, isn't that beautiful? And then to Mary, old Simeon, in the glory of the righteous sunset of his life, made declaration, when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, which is in verse 27, Simeon declared to Mary this, as he spoke to God while Mary listened, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people, Israel, verses 30 and 32. Had they made a declaration that poverty would be no more among men, that war and plague and disease would be forever vanished from the earth, that tears of sorrow would never be again, such an announcement would have been as discord to melody as the chattering of nonsense and idiocy to the speaking of wisdom when put to the light of the divine declaration. But we should think now upon, upon the journey. What is the journey? The journey is the coming of Jesus Christ from the heights of the deity to the depths of errant and moneyless humanity. And so, Dr. R.G. Lee listed some things where he came, and I've, I've added uh, quite a few items to it. So I wanna uh, share that with you. Now think, think of a journey. Think of heaven being bankrupt by sending Jesus Christ to this earth. Think of what he left to what he came into. Yes, there's several journeys and I hope to cover those in future mes messages, but I wanna share with you the, the journey of descent, where he came from and what he came, came to. He came from wealth to bankruptcy. He came down from the adoration of heaven to the abominations of earth. He came from angels to angles, the deceit to even to kill him. He came down from the blessedness of heaven to the bruises of a crucifixion torture. He came down from the faithful to the faithless, and that was his message of time. He came down from the coronations of heaven to the condemnation of earth. He came from light to darkness. Picture his journey now with us, folks, as we think about that. Uh, yes, he came down from the delights of heaven to the defamation of earth. He came from, if you will, from halos to hisses. That's 
sad that you get tears in my eyes when I think of that journey of our Lord Jesus Christ down to take upon himself the form of man. God became man. That was quite a journey. He came down from the glory place to the gory uh, place. He came down from mansions to mangers. What a journey, what a journey. He came from a world, if you will, from heaven of kindness to a world of ingratitude. He came down from the joys of heaven to the jeers of the mob of earth. He came down from the kindness of heaven to the killing of earth. He came down from justice to injustice. He came down from wonder to wilderness. He came down from the love of heaven to the lying accusations of earth. Yes, even to the iniquities of earth. He came down from the majesties of heaven to the miseries of earth. He came down from the nobleness of heaven to the nothingness of earth. He came down from the praise of heaven to the persecution of earth. He came down from the quietness of heaven to the quarrelsomeness of earth. He came down from the riches of heaven to the revelings and ridicules of, of earth. He came down from the songs of heaven to the sneers and scars of earth. He came down from the throne of heaven to the tree of Calvary. He came down from the unison and the unity of heaven to the unmitigated unjustness of earth. He came down from the virtues of heaven to the vices of earth. He came down from the worship of angelic host to the homeless wanderings over earth and to the wrath and wranglings of unprincipled men. Oh, my friend, what a journey. What a descent. But you know what? He ascended back after three days. Well, I shouldn't say that. He came back. He ascended back to heaven after the resurrection. And, and so, well, how far did he come? How far did he go? Well, from Genesis to Revelation, from heaven to hell, Isaiah spoke of this journey in these words in Isaiah 53, 3 through 5. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53, 3 through 5. Oh, my friends, this is a picture of the Christ of Christmas, that babe in a manger who left heaven's glory and heaven's beauty and heaven's unity to a world. So from a mansion to a manger. Yes, that's, that's what the journey that our Lord, Lord did. Why? What did he do all of this? He did it because he loves you. He did it because he wants us to be in eternity in heaven with him. And that's the message of Easter 
my friend, the journey. So he came with his, in the journey from heaven to earth, even to hell, because he said to the thief on the cross, today you'll be with me in paradise, okay? And he went down and he shared what had happened to those that were followers of him. It's a beautiful uh, story, but I'll get back to the, to the message here, uh, folks. Paul spoke of, of this journey uh, of him for whom the innkeeper had no room, no place for him who made all places. As he came down from heavenly honors to earthly humiliation, the creator born of the creature woman, Paul wrote in Philippians 2, 5 through 11, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God hath also, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and all things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the, the Father. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. That was Paul's message, if you will, about the journey of our Lord Jesus Christ from heaven to to earth. Well, it's the time is now for us. That time was the dawn of mercy because we could not ascend to him. Christ descended to us. So his spirit is here. He's here. God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we have read earlier about Call his name Emmanuel, God with us. His name shall be called Jesus, for he'll save his people from their sins. You see, he came to offer himself a sacrifice for your sins and mine that we could come to know Jesus and enjoy the oneness, the awesomeness of ascent when the Lord comes in the air, okay, and we go and meet him in the air, we're ascending. So our journey here on earth, if we know Jesus Christ, will be climaxed, if you will, by our ascending into heaven to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with, with the Lord. That's why he came. That's why he came. And what he's doing right now is sitting right there next to the Father, making intercession for us, to protect us, to guide us, to call us to a personal relationship with, with Jesus uh, Christ. Well, the shepherds, startled by the revelations from heaven, said, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. You know, that's in Luke 2.15. It says, let us now go. You know, there was no hesitation. Okay, they, they wanted to go. And, and so, let us go. Let us go now. So, the information God gave, the shepherds wisely put into action immediately. Not the delay of a week, nor a day, nor an hour, nor a minute. The Savior of men, born in the city of David. And then, let us go see him now. Not where a more convenient time presents itself. Not after we go home and talk it over with our families. But now. Not after we visit again the sheep markets. But now. 
No. When we make, let us do it with haste. Come now and see the Lord. See, folks, that is the invitation for Christmas. Come and see the Lord. Just turn your heart and your mind over to the Lord. You see, there was that babe in a manger, but it wasn't long before they had to flee to get away from uh, persecution, to get away from death, you see. And so, but my message to you is the same message that the angel spoke the same message that Isaiah spoke, the same message that, that the uh, apostles uh, wrote about. It's about Jesus. It's about his journey to earth, his journey to, to, he came, folks, and we need to realize this. He came to die for us. And in that death, he presented our sins to God and God, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he put his stamp of approval on what Jesus had done. You see, folks, that's, that's the real message of, of Christmas. It's all about Jesus. My heart's heavy for the things that are going on in this world. And I just plead with you, if you don't know Jesus, oh, thank him for the journey. Thank him for dying on the cross. Thank him that God put his stamp of approval on everything that Jesus did, and he paid for our sins. All we have to do is say, Jesus, thank you for your journey. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and be my savior. And you know what, folks? He will. Oh, that's the Christmas gift that you really need is, is Jesus uh, Christ. And so uh, to, I, I'm going to stop there. Uh, I really, I want to do another message uh, on this, but I will share uh, a story uh, with you as I share as our closing thought. This is by evangelist Glenn Matthews. It says, it's entitled, He Knew, Yet He Came. It's a beautiful thing. A popular Christmas song, Mary, Did You Know, asks how much the mother of Jesus knew about the future of her baby boy. We can only guess about her knowledge before his birth, for the scripture says she kept all these things and pondered them in her heart, Luke 2, 19. How much did she know about his destiny when he was two or 12, or even when he was 30? We just don't know. We do know how much he knew before he left heaven and the glory that was his from before the foundation of the world. He knew he would be born into a poor family in the poorest of circumstances and be, be raised in the poorest of neighborhoods. He knew, yet he came. He knew that he would be uh, tested by the devil, yet he came. He knew he would be despised and rejected of men, yet he came. He knew his closest followers would forsake him, yet he came. He knew he would suffer physically, emotionally, and spiritually, even unto death, yet he came. Why would he come when he knew what awaited him? He came because he knew the benefits far outweighed the price he would pay. For the joy that was set before him he endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. In bringing many sons unto glory, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, 
that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. As quoting from Hebrews 12, 2, Hebrews 2, 10, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. And uh, Evangelist Matthews closed the little statement, closed this little verse with this. What wondrous love at Christmas and all through the year our hearts should shout, Thanks be to God for his unspeakable gift. And so that's Christmas. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable uh, gift. So the invitation is here, folks. The invitation was in the, the cradle in a manger in Bethlehem. The message was at the cross. The message was at the resurrection. The message was at the ascension of Jesus Christ, where he ascended. Okay, the message has always been Matthew, to, or from uh, Genesis through Revelation, Jesus Christ, the love. He loves us. He died for us. He paid the price for us all through the scriptures. So as we, as we celebrate Christmas, let us celebrate Jesus. It's still okay to say Merry Christmas. It's still okay to, to share your conviction of what Jesus has done for you with others. It's okay. We're proud of Jesus. We're honored to be part of him. And we're honored to have a destiny that will put us into eternity uh, forever. Oh, folks, if you don't know him, look to him. Just ask that simple prayer. So let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wonderful journey that our Lord Jesus Christ has made. And we honor you. And in this Christmas season, it's all about Jesus. Jesus is the greatest gift that man can receive. It's the greatest gift that lasts forever. There's no replacement. There's no replacement parts. It's forever with Jesus. And he, and he went to that cross and he died for us. And God put his stamp of approval three days later when he resurrected him from the dead. That was God the Father saying, well done, my son. Well done, my son. You've established now a program that enlists your power, your person, and your promises to mankind for forgiveness of sin forever and ever. And so shall we be with the Lord. So I pray that prayer for you folks. And so Lord, thank you for the time we could spend together. And I pray a special blessing on each and every one as we enter this, this Christmas week, so to speak. Let us think about Jesus and think about a personal relationship with him. And to those that have accepted Jesus, thank Jesus. What about a gift of, uh, of, of some kind to, to a place where children need help, a place, a mission? We can give a gift where we can help people and bless people. And so I thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part of our, our time together in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, that kind of concludes the message for uh, Christmas, this Christmas week, and uh, just pray you, you have a great uh, Christmas, and remember Jesus is the reason for the season. So thanks very much. This is, if you'd like to write us, drop a note to us, or like to help us with the expenses here at, at Valley View, we'd sure appreciate it. But just remember, honor Jesus Christ 
at this Christmas season. So, I mean, contact me at Valley View Baptist Church, Post Office Box 12653, Ogden, Utah. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, God bless. Merry Christmas, one and all.